Darina, how you doing? Hi, Lisa, how you doing? I kind of want to jump in here. Um, I introduced myself to Lisa in the, the um, discussion forum right before this, but I, I got here and I, I started looking at your guys' um, transaction here. And I just, I, I kind of want to jump in here. Serena, it's very nice to meet you. Um, thanks for your emails. I appreciate everything. Um, and Lisa, as I described, uh, you know, as obviously as you have found out, um, Serena has SMA this course and I just got done teaching this course. So you, you have a lot of backup here. So there's a couple of things I want to address. Um, if from my perspective anyways, so the exhibit prospectus and the, um, uh, the, the, it is a little confusing as to how it, it's, it's described. Um, but that aside, I think it's a really excellent final paper. I think it's a really great way to synthesize what is being taught the objectives in the class. That said, I found a couple of things in the class that were that they didn't get, and I would recommend that you key in on these things. Okay, so um, it looks like Serena gave you a, 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 some really awesome um, a final papers here, and I also have some that I can share with you as well if you need some further examples. The one thing I want to mention about, and Serena, if you'll back me up on this or if you disagree, please jump in, but the one thing I found out um, is that the one thing they had a little bit of difficulty and really needed coaching with throughout the entirety of the course is this right here. This, Introduction Part B, identify a thesis for your exhibit that addresses a significant cultural issue. Make sure your thesis is specific enough to offer a unique perspective. So what does that mean? That means that they have to tie in a significant cultural issue with their paper. Now, a lot of the movement studied in the class are result of significant cultural issues, meaning wars and things like that. But a lot of students didn't get that. They didn't understand it, that you have to tie the work in with a significant cultural issue. The one way that I, I think that I drove that home is I, I gave an example in the class and that was um, I used um, uh, the objectification of women throughout history as, as seen in art. And I used several different examples from the movements in the class. Therefore, the students in that example, the students can see that you have to take a significant cultural issue. You have to synthesize that and tie it in showing examples from specific art movements. Is that correct, Serena? Okay, so that's the one thing that I would, I would watch that. Another thing, I have some notes over here. Another thing I wanted to mention is an, another issue I had in the class, guys, was Art Deco. What did Art Deco mean? The, the, it, Art Deco was used totally different in Europe than it was in the United States. They didn't get that. They didn't make that tie. So I think some coaching there will help. Um, in other words, what I'm saying is that when Art Deco moved across the ocean to the United States, Americans used it, American designers used it as what? As a source for advertising and capitalism. That's one thing I didn't think they, they, they really didn't catch is that a lot of these movements came to America and were used quite successfully in capitalistic advertising. Um, that was something that I, I, I found. Um, oh, and then you asked this question, Lisa, uh, something about quizzes and you, how do you know if they're reading? You'll know. <laughs> You'll know through the discussion boards. You will definitely know. I'm sure Serena will agree with that. You will definitely know a couple of sentences into their responses and you're going to know if they've been reading or not. So I'm um, typically I'll ask questions directly from the reading and and uh, prompt them to look at the reading so that that we know that they're really actually following up with their, their reading. Okay, hope that helps guys. Um any if you guys have any anything to add or or whatever, I'll 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 jump over to your thread right now, Lisa, and direct you to this video so you can benefit from it. But oh, I wanted to show you something. Um this was a paper, and this paper was okay, so this was the, the grappling with mortality in art. So so her cult significant cultural issue was grappling with multi, mortality. Um her introduction is the 200, and watch your thesis, your uh uh, rubric as well. The introduction is 200 to 250 words, so this matches that. So she got full points here. Uh, thesis, this exhibit features works from, uh, wait a second, thesis. Death is a universal experience and it is interesting to see all of the different interpretations of death throughout time and uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. So that was her thesis. Good job there. And then she went through this wonderful, wonderful set of examples. Edvard Munch here, um, 
uh, but, but, uh, Klimt, uh, great examples, Frida. He, she's at Warhol. She's just done a wonderful job of looking at death through the, and this absolutely tremendous contemporary um, piece. So she's done a tremendous job. <laughs> Damien, Damien Hurst. I mean, she, as you can see, she's just done a fantastic job tying this thing together and, and presenting significant cultural issues, all of which tie in with, um, here's an installation for minimalism, uh, uh, surrealism. I, I, I think that Hearst can fall in a lot of different categories. But as you can see, each one of these falls into a category that we have studied in the class. Okay, I'm over five minutes, guys. Didn't want to do that, but I, I just wanted to help you help um, out a little bit, um, Lisa. And I hope I did. If, if not, let me know. I'll try to clarify. If this helped, let me know and I'll keep them coming. <laughs> Thanks, guys.